Welcome. This short video is about the Consumer Price Index and how the Consumer Price Index is calculated as well as how it's used and some measurement issues that can arise with the Consumer Price Index. So the Consumer Price Index is designed to measure the price level for a certain set of goods and services. Specifically, we're looking at goods and services that would be used by a typical urban consumer. We refer to these goods and services, this package of goods and services, as the market basket. And this can include products such as real estate, health care, food, energy expenditures, clothing, entertainment. Co and to calculate the consumer price index, we're going to compare the cost of this basket to the cost in the base year. Currently, the base year for the consumer price index in the United States is an average of this basket between 1982 and 1984. So we compare the cost of products that a consumer might buy during this time period to the cost in the current year and we're able to compose an index that shows us how the average level of price is, is changing for consumers. The consumer price index is often referred to as a cost of living index because it's measuring how prices change for products that consumers buy in their day-to-day -day life. When we calculate inflation in the United States, we're calculating the percentage change in the consumer price index. So the percentage change from month to month or the percentage change over the period of a year. The CPI is measured monthly and it's measured by um, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which is part of the Department of Labor in the federal government. Measuring the CPI is quite an undertaking. There's over 200 categories with over 100 items in each category in this market basket in an effort to capture the kinds of things that consumers buy, from vaccinations to shaving cream. Prices are checked in 87 cities, over 23,000 retailers, 50,000 landlords to give us an idea about rent. So it's quite an undertaking. The Consumer Price Index, despite all this care of being of measurement, um, the Consumer Price Index has some biases that will concern economists. The Bureau of Labor Statistics over time has tried to adjust for these biases, but in terms of construction, they probably still exist. A lot of people are concerned that the CPI overstates inflation. In terms, so a bias is really it, the actual measurement is either pushed consistently up or down. In this case, CPI has been accused of having an upward bias. Why? Well, the CPI bias comes from one issue is the substitution effect. So, for example, if the price of coffee were to double, chances are people would cut back on coffee or they'd switch to tea or other soft drinks. That's the substitution effect. But if we actually hold the market basket fixed, we're not going to adjust for that. So if the market basket has a fixed amount of coffee in calculating this index, the substitution effect isn't there and the effect of inflation on the consumer is overstated. The second problem is quality changes. So a car in 1968 is not the same as the car in 2012. The safety features, the fuel economy, the reliability, very different in those two automobiles. So quality changes suggest that even if we're paying more for a product, we're actually getting a much better product. So with quality changes, again, we're probably overstating the impact of price increases. Another issue is the delay of new products in the market basket. So we can think of uh, the ubiquitous mobile phone. Uh, it didn't even exist in 1968. And when mobile phones first came out, again, they've changed dramatically over time. And when they initially came out, they were a lot more expensive than they are today. So the delay of new products means that the market basket doesn't capture the price decline that happens when a new product becomes more widespread. Again, overstating inflation. The, C the BLS over time has taken a lot of steps to adjust the CPI to minimize these biases. The CPI is believed to overstate inflation. Some will argue that it even understates in inflation, particularly for certain groups. So for example, the elderly might argue that the CPI doesn't put enough weight on health care. If elderly households spend a lot more on health care, the CPI might not pick up their true cost of living increase because health care costs tend to rise faster than the prices of other goods and services. So this is really only going to be an estimate of the average level of prices. Now why do we care about this bias? Well, if the CPI is measuring inflation, it's often measuring cost of living adjustments as well. Wages and salaries under certain contracts, Social Security and federal pensions are indexed to the Consumer Price Index. 
even we use the CPI to adjust the tax brackets every year um, on the tax forms. So if, if we use the CPI to adjust nominal quantities for inflation, if the CPI is biased, our, our adjustments are wrong. So it's something we have to care about. Biases aside, how are we measuring the consumer price index? So in any year Z, the consumer price index is the cost of this market basket in year Z relative to the cost of the market basket in a base year. So the index is really telling us a relative comparison. The CPI in the base year is always going to be 100. Why? Because in the base year, the numerator and the denominator here are going to be the same. So that'll be 1. And then times 100 is equal to 100. So if we actually see a CPI going above 100, prices are higher than they were in the base year. If the CPI for that year is below 100, prices are lower than in the base year. Let's do an example. So suppose the cost of the market basket in 1960 was $6,000. The cost of the market basket in 1970 is $12,000. If we make 1970 the base year, what is the consumer price index in 1960? So the consumer price index in 1960 will be the cost of the market basket in 1960 relative to the cost of the market basket in our base year, 1970, and times 100. So using that formula, the market basket cost is $6,000 in 1960, it's $12,000 in 1970, times 100. 0.5 times 100, or 50. So the consumer price index in 1960 is 50, when we use 1970 as our base year. Same set of data here, but now let's calculate the CPI in 1970. Same base year, same market basket cost. Of course here, the cost of the market basket in 1970 relative to the base year, which is also 1970. And of course these two things, numerator and denominator, are going to be exactly the same. So if we go ahead and do the calculations, we have 12,000 over 12,000, which is 1, times 100 equals 100. So we can see in the base year, the consumer price index is always equal to 100 by construction. So the consumer price index is 50 in the year 1960, and it's 100 in the year 1970 in my example. So now we can actually calculate inflation over that decade. So to calculate inflation, we need the CPI for each of those decades with the same base year. And we've already done that. So now we just need to calculate the percentage increase over this decade. So the percentage increase in the CPI is an increase of 50 relative to where we started in 1960, which was 50. And then we change it to a percent by multiplying by 100. And of course we get 100%. Price has doubled in this example, so that's an inflation rate of 100% over that 10 year period. We can also use the CPI to adjust nominal quantities, nominal dollar amounts, for the impact of inflation. For example, consider a salary of $100,000 in 2012, and that has a certain purchasing power for consumer products. But suppose you want to say, what's the equivalent amount in 1968? In other words, what salary in 1968 would really give us the same buying power as a consumer as $100,000 in 2012? We know it's got to be smaller than $100,000 because there's been a lot of inflation since 1968. So we can actually get data about the consumer price index and we can find that in 1968 the CPI is 35 and the CPI in 2012 is 231. So we can use these CPI numbers then to adjust the quantity. So the 1968 equivalent will be the 2012 amount times the CPI ratio that tells us that prices are different. So putting in our specific numbers, we have 100,000 times a fraction 35 over 231. In other words, we get a little over 15,000. So doing this exercise says a salary of 15,000 in 1968 is about equivalent to 100,000 in 2012 in terms of buying goods and services that a typical consumer would buy with their salary. We even actually online have a lot of inflation calculators that will do these calculations for you automatically. Um, here we're going to skip over to one at the Bureau of Labor Statistics. 
and we can actually affirm that I, the calculations were correct. So recall, we just did, so 15,151 in 1968 has the same buying power as almost $100,000 in 2012, thus affirming the calculations that we just did on that PowerPoint slide.